you go force electrify. We're still talking about uh, forces in equilibrium, just like we have been we have been doing. Talking about forces in equilibrium, and this force in equilibrium, what it implies is that when matter is in equilibrium, it is held in that equilibrium by forces. Is held by forces, and we need to know these forces. We need to calculate these forces. That's what we are we are talking about. Trying to know these forces. Now, example is this: if an object is standing, or a matter is standing, if an object is standing, is standing, and the object is pushed horizontally h1 is pushed horizontally and the object is able to resist horizontal push that means the horizontal the force that is pushing it horizontal and the and the resistance of the object to that horizontal push i won and that means algebraically the force that's pushing it plus the resistance is equal to zero algebraically that means because the force the force pushing it is pushing it horizontally and the resistance is opposite it and if you subtract them they'll give you zero that's what my algebraic solution summation so in that case we can say that that object that is in equilibrium horizontally that total force Total horizontal force is equal to zero. Total horizontal force is equal to zero. If the object is hit, pushed down vertically, pushed down vertically, and the object resists the push, it didn't deform, it didn't move. It resists the push vertically. What it means is that the, 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 the force pushing it down is equal to the resistance up. That means the total force, the total force vertically is equal to zero. And the total force, vertical force, is equal to zero. If the object is bent, is bent, the object is bent, just watch the arrow. If the object is bent and they refuse to bend, that means the moment that is bending it is equal to its own resisting moment. What that means, since the two moments are in different directions, total moment is equal to zero. You will see that I got three equations. First one, total horizontal force is equal to zero, total vertical force is equal to zero, total moment is equal to zero. Whenever we want to solve problems in engineering, we try to convert the features of that problem, the features of that problem, to, we try to convert the features of that problem to equations. We try to convert the equation. What well, an equation is a connection between mathematical expressions, which is linked together by the sign of equality. When the sign of equality links mathematical expression, an equation is formed. If you watch here, total h is equal to zero. Total h here is an expression. Zero is an expression. The equality there is the connection. So equation is formed. And when you now form those equations, solving those equations will give you the features of the, of the, of the system you're trying to get. So, if you look at here, we have three equations that has been developed due to the feature of this system here, as I explained. And these three equations, because they were talking of equilibrium of the, of the system, statics, the system is not, it's not moving. We call these three equations that I've just embedded here, equation of statics. That is equation of equilibrium. Three of them, there are three. Equation of equilibrium. And for it to solve a problem in engineering, that problem must have at least three unknown factors you are looking for. 
for the three equations to solve it. If the, if the factors you are looking for are more than three, this equation cannot solve it because the equation is only three in number. So most of the structures we, we have, we're going to deal with, we're going to use this equation to solve them because most of the structures we're going to deal with, we have the highest they will have will be three unknowns. Such structures, because this such structures are called are said to be determinate. Determinants means that the structures can be solved by these three equations of statics. That was the earlier use in engineering. The structures which these three equations solves are said to be determinant. The ones these equations cannot solve are said to be indeterminate. We are going to go to that. Now, why, why is this equation not able to solve the indeterminate structures? It's because the indeterminate structures have more unknowns, more unknown reactions than there are these equations. And what, how do we solve that? We solve the, 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 the indeterminate structures by creating more equations. As there are unknown reactions, we create more equations to be what the number of unknown reactions. And we solve the, the indeterminate structure. We're going to go to that when we get to that. But now we're going to start dealing with determinate structures. Now, to deal with determinate structures, every structure standing stands on a support. It stands on a support. So, and the reaction that comes is supplied by the support. So now, what we're trying to do, what we normally do is to say, there are many types of support in any structure. A support like this. We have a support like this. We have a support like this. We have a support like this. Or like this. You see, this support, this support like this is called a ruler. It's called a ruler because it has only a vertical support. If, and if a force, if there's a force here pushing it down, there's a, a reaction here, we say, no, we resist it. But if a force is pushing it horizontally, it will move. This, this is, this is, it will move. So we, that's why it's called a ruler, because it will roll. If a force applies here, it will roll. That's why it's called a roller. But if a force pushes it from up, it will resist. Or if a force pushes it from down, it will resist. So it has only one resistance. It has only one resistance, the vertical resistance. This, this support has only one resistance. And we call it, it's, a, it's called a roller. And it has only one resistance. So whenever we have this type of support, we know that the only resistance there is only a vertical resistance. Now this one, this support, this, this support here has resistance vertically and horizontally. If it's pushed down, the vertical resistance will refuse. We resist. If it's pushed horizontally, the horizontal resistance will also refuse. So we saw that such type of such type of support like this set of supports like this one this support this support a this support b so it's about support that support b has two reactions if you push it horizontally to be resisted if you push it vertically it will be resisted now this support this support here support c has vertical resistance horizontal resistance and it, it resists bending. It resists bending. If you bend it, it will not resist. It will not agree. Because there is a resisting bending moment. There's a resisting bending moment. If you push it down, no. Push it horizontally, no. Bend it, it will not. So it has three resistors. It has three resisting action. Or three resisting reactions. This type of, of, uh, uh, this type of support. So the, these are the three supports we be, will likely be meeting as we go on to deal, especially with these indeterminate structures. Now let us look at one feature. We have talked about force on, in structures. Let us talk about the bending. The bending 
It's also called bending moment. There are a lot of, there are different types of moments. There is torsional moment, which is twisting, twisting moment. But we are more interested now in bending moment, not the torsional moment, the bending moment. So this bending moment is the turning effect, is the turning effect of force. It is, it is the type of moment that makes a, a force to turn. It's the moment that makes a force to turn. That's why we call it the turning effect of force. And mathematically, is equal to the force that is being considered times the perpendicular distance from the point, from the fulcrum. Fulcrum is where it turns. Where it turns, the point at which the turning occurs is called the fulcrum. From where the force is situated, if this is the force is situated here and it turns about here, this is the fulcrum. So this angle needs to be 90 degrees for this force to be able to turn, make this turn. If the, for, if, the, if the angle is not 90 degrees, it will not turn. If the angle is not 90 degrees, that is, the, the, the force must be perpendicular to the distance from the fulcrum for turning to, for turning to a curve. We are bringing this because we are going to talk a lot about bending moment when we, as, we, as we continue. So the bending moment is the turning effect of force. And example is something like a barrel. A, a wheelbarrow. If I have a wheelbarrow, if I have a wheelbarrow loaded, this is the, the fulcrum. The tie of the wheelbarrow is the fulcrum. This is the handle. This, if you have a child here, the child holds the barrel. And if you if you load this barrel with uh, let's say about three or four bags of cement, the child may be able to push the barrel. But if you load the bag of cement on the ground and tell the child to, to lift the bag of cement, you will see that the child will not be able to lift the cement. He will not be able to lift the cement. He will not be able to lift the cement. If you tell him to lift, he will not be able to lift the cement. The reason is because the, 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 the moment created by the boy, by the boy's weight, it's not more than the one created by the by the bag of cement. If you want to lift the cement, the boy will, if the boy is here trying to lift the cement, trying to lift the cement, he may not be able to. But because here, here, from here, this is the fulcrum. The distance from here to here. This L L one. Look at the, the cement, the, the center of the cement. This is the weight of the cement. This is the, the, four, the, the distance is from here to here. L2. You see the, the difference between L1 and L2? L1 is far, far larger than L2. Whatever is the, even if the boy, the, the child's weight is so is small, that's W2. If the child's weight is small, but by multiplying it with L1, which is very large, it may result to being larger than L2 and W1. That is the product of L2 and W1 will be far less than L1 and W2. And as such, the boy's moment become more than the moment the, the bag of cement generates. And as such, the, 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 the boy will be able to lift the barrel and the, and the barrel start rolling and carries the, 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 the bag of cement and moves as the boy pushes. That's the effect of moment, turning the effect of force. Thank you very much.